What are business rules? Well, I think they often get confused with what I call trivial validation. I'm Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I think it's important to make the distinction because where you apply business rules or validation will differ. I also think it's an indicator of the type of system that you're building. Let me explain and illustrate with a simple code example so you can see the distinction between the two. Thanks to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So one of the differences between validation and business rules is it determines what type of system that you're building. If you're ultimately using what I consider trivial validation, you'll realize that you're building a CRUD-driven system because that means that most of the business logic or all of it, a part of workflows and all these different business rules are actually in your end users' heads, not in your software. So let's immediately jump to some code so I can illustrate this. I know I have a lot of viewers that are using things other than C-sharp, like PHP, TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Java, etc. I appreciate it, and you'll get the gist of this simple example. So we have a warehouse product, and one of the first methods that I'm gonna illustrate here is just ship product. So we take a quantity as input, and we're just checking if the quantity is less or equal to zero, then we're throwing an exception, saying the quantity must be greater than zero. Then we have another statement here, check, saying if the quantity is greater than the warehouse state that we have of quantity on hand, so let's say that in our warehouse system here, we have our current state of a quantity on hand, that's 10. If we pass in 11, this is gonna throw, saying that we cannot ship to a negative quantity on hand. This is basically some logic around not to trying to oversell, essentially. And then from there, the rest is really unimportant, but what we're doing is we're creating a new event called product shipped, we're applying that event, so it gets applied to our current state, and then just we add it to our list of events. But the real important part here, what I'm trying to illustrate, are these two if statements. So were those two if statements just trivial validation or were they actually business rules? Well, let's make the distinction so we can determine that. So the first thing really is to talk about that validation, that trivial, I also like to call it superficial. And the way that is really important to notice this is that it's often static. And what I mean by that is it's really not changing. Once you've kind of defined this logic, it's just staying that way for the lifespan of your application. Another way to kind of make this distinction, it's it's really about kind of input, output, and at that outer layer. So what I mean by that is, it's a lot of this is translation. Let's say we're talking about HTTP or a web app, and you have some input coming in from whatever that HTTP request, and you're converting that into some type of logic within your application. You're really doing this translation, and that's where you're really seeing it. Then you're taking that logic and you're kind of passing it to where business logic actually lies. And then if the final kind of real indicator here is oftentimes it's deterministic, meaning that if you provide it some type of input, it's always gonna return the exact same output. Now on the flip side, let's talk about business rules. Now they're not static. They're gonna evolve because your domain possibly is changing or your understanding is changing, or the business is changing on how they want to operate and have these rules. So they're not static. They're the exact opposite of that. And that's where you can kind of indicate these things is, can it change? Will it change? Might it change? The other thing is in terms of evolving is they also might expand, meaning you might be applying new business rules, again, as the domain evolves or the business evolves. And I put often here in quotes, because it's a really good indicator as well, is that it often is based on the state of the system. So it's not just, it can be deterministic and you can develop it in that way, but oftentimes, even if it is deterministic, it's also based on the state of the system. So let's just jump back into that code and now you'll be able to kind of see the differences in my simple example between kind of that trivial validation logic and actual business rules. So you can see this first condition, it's just trivial. It we're just checking to see if the quantity is less or equals to zero. And it's static, meaning it's not really gonna evolve, it's not really gonna change. Once we've written this statement, it's likely gonna stay that way forever, pretty much. You can also notice that I have in other places beyond ship product, I also have receipt product that needs to do the exact same logic. And it's just repeated in a few different places within this class. But it's just, it's not really gonna change, it's not gonna really evolve. 
The input of this quantity is likely coming from some type of form element in this MVC app or Web API app that it's actually passing this in. And then after I get past this point, that's when I actually really care about applying business rules. The other thing, like I mentioned, with kind of this trivial stuff is it's deterministic, right? If you always pass in zero or less than zero, you're always gonna get this exception thrown. So one way that we can deal with this is kind of remove this trivial logic. And I'm gonna show an example of doing that by rather forcing you to pass in valid values into this class, into this aggregate. One way of doing this is just creating types that force you to be in a valid state right from the get-go. So I just move this logic into a record called quantity, and then we can use this to do our check, see if it's less or equal to zero and throw. Otherwise we can set our value and I just have some implicit operator here to convert it to an integer. Then what we can do is if I actually look at our ship product, we can turn this into a quantity and then we can just remove this trivial logic. The same can be applied wherever else I was using it. We can just get rid of this logic and put it in our single place forcing everything to be in a valid state so that we know we have a valid quantity right from the get-go. Now, what makes this other condition a business rule? The first is that it can evolve as our business evolves. So for example, right now, we have our quantity, we're checking to see that we cannot ship any more than we actually physically have on hand in the warehouse based on state, which I mentioned was also kind of an indicator. Now this could change. We may say, actually, really in a warehouse, we're not gonna be so strict about any particular product that we actually wanna give some type of buffer where we can oversell a little bit. And this is often why you run into things like back orders, because these exist. So instead, maybe we have some buffer that we actually wanna apply, and that's why this rule can actually change. It's not set in stone like the quantity being less or equal to zero. Again, that was trivial validation. This is some type of business rule that our business decided how we want to apply it. If we didn't have it here, it would be in our end user's head and they would need to know whether they could actually ship a product or not based on the quantity on hand. They would inherently know this. As things would evolve, they would have to update their own knowledge about this. Rather, if it's in code and we're defining it here, it can evolve. So that's a big indicator of if it's a business rule, can it evolve, will it evolve? The second one, as I mentioned, it expanding is that it may turn into not just this business rule. It may be okay related to the quantity buffer, but how many actual products do we have on order from the supplier that we can use? This is actually something in the industry related to warehousing. It actually has a term called um, available to promise, but it's actually a business function to figure out what actual quantity that we may use. So that's actual business rule could be evolving and expanding where we may add more rules to it. And lastly, I mentioned about state. We're using state here. This isn't deterministic depending on how we derive the state. In my example, I'm passing all the state in. So I have what the state of the product in the warehouse is our quantity on hand. So this could be deterministic, but depending on if you're reaching out to your database here, or you had some database uh, access that you were doing, some data access, it wouldn't necessarily be um, as simple to make this uh, deterministic. But still the idea being is that, again, you're using it based off state. Your business rule is based on the state of the system, which is another in indicator that it's a business rule. So hopefully you can see if you make this distinction, this trivial validation, you can actually move around. Maybe use something built into the framework that you're using. You put some attributes on some different models to say, okay, this can be within this range, this particular value, or this string has a max value of this, or something's supposed to be a phone number or something supposed to be in the format of an email address, et cetera. You kind of do this trivial validation outside of where your actual business logic is living. You're not really muddying the water between the two. You can keep that validation separate. Usually you put it at a higher level, kind of where your framework is, where that input is to get everything into a valid state so you can attempt to perform some operation. It doesn't mean it's valid based on what the state of the system is, but they're valid values. That way you can have your logic, if you have complex logic, be that of specific business rules and not trying to intermingle and mix kind of that trivial stuff with actual business logic. If you realize now that you really only have kind of that trivial logic, then you can just start to determine, okay, maybe this is just crud and that's fine. That's the type of system that we're building. And a lot of that knowledge and information is in our end users' heads. 
fine. Maybe that's not what you wanna be building and you can realize, okay, we can separate these things. Maybe we get into something like using aggregates, like I was using as an illustration here, where we can put all these business rules related to these domain concepts. So understanding the difference can definitely have beneficial outcome on what your code base looks like. If you found this video helpful, but you still have thoughts or questions or your own opinions about software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.